Hello and welcome to the Vacability Rest Stop Podcast. Vacability is a review-based website where people with disabilities or unique abilities can rate and review places based upon accessibility. Accessibility doesn't just mean physical accessibility, but includes all types of accessibility needs. So physical, blind and low vision, deaf and hard of hearing, sensory friendly, allergy friendly, and more. Head to www.vacability.com to check it out. So each episode, we will take a break from your norm and we'll be talking about different accessibility or inclusion tourism topics with different guests. Today, we're talking about service dogs with our guest, Taylor Culp. Taylor is a good friend of mine and she is a chronic illness warrior. She has chronic illnesses such as POTS and Sjogren's. And she has been volunteering with the service and companion dog organization called Canine Partners for Life in Pennsylvania. And she was recently placed with her own service dog, Laurel. (laughs) Also, Laurel is like the cutest dog (laughs) and she's always so happy. So Canine Partners for Life is our um, noteworthy mention for today. It is a very awesome organization, and it's dedicated to training service dogs, home companion dogs, and residential companion dogs to assist individuals who have a wide range of physical and cognitive disabilities. Head to their website at the letter K, the number 9, the number 4, life.org. So without further ado, let's welcome Taylor, and I'm sure Laurel's right there. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Yes, Laurel is actually snoring on me right now. (laughs) We just ran outside, so she's really tired. I'm not surprised. (laughs) She plays hard and then sleeps like an old man. (laughs) And works hard. Oh, oh yeah. Very, very hard. So she deserves it. Yes. Oh, but I know she likes to play a lot. She does. So we get a good mix of playing, working, working on our skills and training, and good always uh, enough time to sleep for us. <laughs> for both for of you. Time. Yes, for both of us, yes. We All right. Our naps. <laughs> so uh, how about you tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself, first of all? Um, okay. So I am Taylor. <laughs> I am 24 years old from Pennsylvania. Um, uh, I don't know about myself. Like about my illnesses? Anything? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, um, I'm. What do you like to do for fun? I love hanging out with my dogs and other people's dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the that I volunteered for Canine Partners for Life, um, for almost three years now. Um, prior to getting Laurel. So I spent a lot of time doing that when I was able to. Um, So that was really, really fun for me. And I got to take home the dogs for weekends, sometimes a couple weeks. I actually had a dog for uh, the beginning of COVID. I was pretty much just fostering him. So he was out of the kennel. Yeah, those are, that's my big hobby. I'm definitely a professional binge watcher. I like to call myself too. (laughs) What's your favorite show to watch right now? Oh, that's too hard. Um, I love Good Friends episode. I can watch that all day. I just finished uh, catching up on This Is Us. That's a good one. Yeah, that was. That That's was like good. a tearjerker show. It is, but it was really good. Last season was really good. I can't wait for the next season. But yeah, that's. And we watched it. 90 Day that's Fiance. Fun. Oh, God, we have to. Yeah. <laughs> 90 Day Fiance and Married at First Sight. Yeah, every single episode. <laughs> Those are our guilty pleasures. I feel like we need to be on um, Pillow Talk. Oh my God, that'd be awesome. Us and our dogs, we need to be on Pillow Talk. That can be their new spinoff episode. Yes, although Laurel likes to sleep through 90 Day Fiance. I don't think she's a huge fan as we are. Yeah, no, Darla doesn't really care. She just snores. And then I have to turn the volume up to drown out her snoring. Although... Laurel really seemed to like Hamilton when I watch it. Oh. She she perks up a little, and she's the only one that doesn't mind my singing of Hamilton. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's how you know it's a good service dog match. (laughs) Right? Yeah. (laughs) 
All right. So talking about service dogs, how did you know that you wanted a service dog or how did you like come to figure out service dogs even existed? Um, so I started to get um, chronic illness diagnoses around 11 years ago. And I just kept getting sicker and sicker. And um, I was um, supposed to go to college, supposed to play volleyball in college and everything. And I wasn't able to do that. So I was getting pretty, pretty down and low. And, you know, I, my, I was losing my independence. I, um, I stopped driving. I stopped pretty much going anywhere. So um, my mom, she works at a rehab facility. And actually people from canine partners for life volunteers they bring in um puppies that they're raising from canine partners um into the hospital and visit the patients while they're there so they got talking to my mom they became really um good friends and they got on the topic of me one day and they're like your daughter needs a dog from this place (laughs) we knew nothing about service dogs before that right Which is surprising because you are obsessed with dogs. (laughs) I know. I mean, I knew of service dogs, but not like a whole lot. Not the details, right. And like, I didn't know there was an organization literally 45 minutes away from me. Right. Like, and like one of the major organizations in the country. Right. Yeah. So, so they actually, I was impatient um, at CHOP and they came to my room. They came with their puppy and training little Winnie I love Winnie she's a golden doodle Uh Um, and they just told me all about canine partners and just service dogs in general and I started my application that night I was like this is exactly what I need this will help you know get my some independence back because what I was like any treatment I was doing it just wasn't working Uh, you know no medicine was really helping at all so so I just thought like service dogs like that 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 was going to be my real treatment right because you'd have something that could that could help you out even if right. like the pharmaceutical treatments and all the medications weren't working yeah exactly and i know one thing you mentioned i want to point out um the go- golden doodles um so a lot of service organizations or service dog organizations or some of them at least um, have poodles and golden doodles for people that have some like allergy friendly needs. So I think that's mm-hmm. important to point out not only for the people that have other disabilities like physical or cognitive disabilities, but if you have some allergy issues, there are service dog options for those people as well. Yeah. Um, so how did you get involved with, with volunteering after that? Um, so I put my application in uh, four years ago for Canine Partners as a, a, as a recipient. Okay. And I knew that it was going to be a long wait. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people who uh, want a dog from there. Um, so I am terrible at waiting. I am the <laughs> most impatient person ever. So I wanted to do something with the dogs, yeah. even if it wasn't my actual own dog for a while. So the day I put in my application was the day I, I put in my volunteer application too. Wow. Yeah. So um, I uh, I started that. I started really slow. Like it took a couple months to do like you do a couple of training classes to volunteer to, um, you know, uh, learn how to handle the dogs and learn like specific commands that they use. Yeah. So I just started, um, you know, um, the dogs in their second year of training, they uh, live in the kennel with one another. So I would go on the weekends and just literally it was called cuddle time. And you, just sat, you sat with a dog for like a half hour. You just pet them. You know, it was, it was their nice relaxation time yeah. with someone else. And um, so that was always nice to do. So it let me like, oh, like see, get to know the dogs already who were in their second year. And it was always like, oh, is this a dog that could be mine? (laughs) Little did I know, my dog wasn't even born for two two years later. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) But yeah, so I started off cuddling. And then I worked my way up to, um, I did, they do socializations. Okay. uh, Classes. So the trainers go out with other volunteers. And each volunteer has a dog that's in their second year of training. Yeah. And we uh, go in public to work on their public access. You know, everything that, um, you know, they they do, they do, um, they work on their skills um, out um, in public. And then, so I love doing that. 
to really see, you know, like these dogs can do pretty amazing things. Right. And then I worked my way up to, you know, like I mentioned, the weekend dogs, bringing them home for the weekend. And then um, if they need it to, like um, bringing them home for a couple of weeks or in uh, either's case, three months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because they shut down, you know, the campus right in the beginning. So he spent the spent March to June with us. A long <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, he was awesome though. Now he, he was he was such a a nice um, relief from all the chaos in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel <laughs> like dogs do that anyways like oh, yeah. like even if it's not a service dog i feel like dogs okay. are such like a a relief and a break and like a uh-huh. i don't know like a a relaxation thing uh-huh. like they're just like a like an unconditional love <laughs> yeah, yeah no, <laughs> that no just like what, always want to be around you is, yeah, yeah right uh-huh. right now i know you've been volunteering is volunteering something that's that's hard to do with a chronic illness it definitely is. Um, luckily, because it's a volunteer position, you know, you're not as, uh, you, it's not, you don't have to be as reliable as it, if it was your actual job. Um, but it was definitely hard. And it, but it motivated me as well, because it made me, especially when I took dogs home on the weekend, mm-hmm. it made me realize just how much work that I needed to put into having my actual own service dog. Right. Like it's, it's, me and the dog like it's no one else really like it's my responsibility I have to let the dog out I have to feed the dog in the morning right let her out um you know and I mean you have to do all that like not only as a as because it's your dog but you need to bond with your dog right exactly yeah like um because I have Laurel like this is only our, our month two um you know really um no one else is allowed to play with her, pet her, mm-hmm. give her treats, like, so she knows I am her person, and it's just really me and us trying to work on our bond as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that our listeners understand and and to emphasize that it's, it's not like having, like, your pet dog in terms mm-hmm. of work, like, it is your responsibility, like, nobody else can do the things for you, just be- mm-hmm. because that bonding time is so important, so mm-hmm. if you're considering a service dog, I feel like that's something that a lot of people should should understand, and maybe they should volunteer with an organization before they get a service dog, just so they get an understanding of, of the roles and responsibilities and, and things that kind of go into it before before they get into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I I definitely agree because it it really made me have a new perspective on everything, and even like I know not everyone has an or like a service dog organization near them. I right. mean, it doesn't even have to be that. It can be your local rescue uh, center right. or shelter, even walking a neighbor's dog. So you know, like like because I before like last year, I couldn't walk maybe a quarter mile. Yeah. I, I mean, I was using my wheelchair most of the time. But now I'm able, I walk usually a mile and a half with Laurel. Like, and I know that's not possible for everyone and that's totally okay. But you can, you can possibly work your way up to it or just, you know, you know, and it's always, it's always like, it's always a uh, good to remember, like it's, yes, it's your responsibility, but you know, I have those off days. I had surgery already with Laurel. So like, there are times like your parent can step in right. or someone else. Right. You know, and it is a possibility, but you want to try, like, I try as hard, like, oh, like, I, I can do that. I can still do this. Right. And it motivated me after surgery to keep moving. To actually after. get it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, no, this is this is my dog. Like, I don't want anyone else helping me out. Like, this is this is my right, job. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, that was one of the reasons I don't have a service dog, but I, I have Darla, my little blind beagle with a lot of personality <laughs> who is awesome <laughs> who is ridiculous and <laughs> is actually like nudging me right now to pet her and give her belly rubs but she was one of the reasons like the one of the reasons why I wanted a dog to begin with is is to really like motivate me for the days that like I didn't want to get out of bed but I know I kind of could get out of bed mm-hmm. Um, like knowing that I had to feed the dog or take the dog out and walk her. And, and it's such like, I have 
um, arthritis and inflammatory arthritis in my feet and in my ankles and in my knees. And sometimes it's very hard for me to walk, but walking is important to do because, oh, bless you. <laughs> walking is important to do just because if you don't walk, then you get worse. And that's, that's, I mean, that's like with a lot of conditions, if you don't walk or move around, you get deconditioned. So if like, I know I need to walk sometimes. So mm-hmm. walking the dog is, is a good like motivator for me. And all my neighbors know me and they ask me, you walk your dog a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I walk my dog like twice a day up and down the block. It's not far. I just go up and down the block just because we both get tired. But I mean, I'm still moving. And I think that's, that's important to point out for, for people um, who are considering service dogs. Um, so how have things changed since you got a service dog? Um, things have already changed a lot. I feel, I feel like, um, just, I mean, I feel like too, knowing you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I said, I, I really stopped driving for a while, um, before when I got like really, really worse and, um, already since Laurel's been here, I started out with my dad um driving with us yeah and then we've already gone on two solo trips together driving so that's, that's exciting huge. that's like yeah. huge yeah because yeah, it's been cause... what like like six years five years since you've drove you've driven well, i like every like couple years i i drive like once okay so, like, but, it was, like, but by yourself it was, like, yeah oh oh by myself oh yeah it's been like five years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's like a but huge yeah. thing. It it really is. Like it's a it's a very big deal to me. And um and it's just so nice. Like I got that like that little taste of independence back and I was like, I want more of this. Yeah. I, I, I like this. <laughs> uh yeah, so that happened and then recently, just last week, we drove by ourselves, but also we did an errand. We went to the grocery store and got like a birthday card for someone. I have never done that in my life. I've never run an errand by myself. Wow. Plus my my furry sidekick. (laughs) Um, But I've never done that before. That's like a huge, a huge deal. Yeah. So like that was crazy. Like it's still like mind blowing to me. Like uh, it sounds so silly, like running an errand. Right. I mean, for people, for people that don't have like disabilities or chronic illnesses, they're like, oh yeah, running an errand. Like it's something they sort of take for granted. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't even, people don't even like think about it. Like, it's just like, oh, like this is just what I had to do. But no, like it was so nerve wracking, but like, like it felt so good afterwards. (laughs) Like I, like I accomplished something on my own. Yeah. Plus Laurel. Plus Laurel, yeah. <laughs> she's told, always included. She's always included. She's literally your furry sidekick now. She is, yeah. <laughs> I told you, now we're go- we're we're working our way up to starting to go on road trips. <laughs> yes, I'm only at like 10 minute car rides, but... I mean, look, know. baby steps. Right, I started with five and now I'm at 10. Right, so. right. Yeah. Soon <laughs> you'll work your way to come to my house. Which yes, is like, yeah. I don't know, it's like a half hour maybe? Yeah, I think so. All right. So we're, we're working our way up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to get on a highway, I think, for that, though. That's that's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> I'll right. find back roads. <laughs> yeah, back roads. <laughs> I'm sure there are. Because there are oh, yeah. a lot of people, I mean, even without, like, disabilities, there are a lot of people that don't like to drive on highways. Because they're, oh, yeah. like, really scary. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Cars coming are. at you 60 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So since we are a travel website, what is it like traveling with a service dog? I mean, not only like in the car, but I know you've been on airplanes with service dogs before. So what is that? What is that like? Well, I've actually never been on a plane with a service dog. Oh, before. really? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I took I took a dog to um, Nashville, but we drove. Oh, I didn't know you drove. Actually, another volunteer drove them. Oh, but, um, okay. Yeah, they met us there. Okay, and but then, I know uh, you've been in the car on on trips oh, in the yeah. car with with service dogs before. So, what is that oh. like? Like traveling and like not only being in the car, but going to rest stops and going to like restaurants and 
and other buildings and stuff. What is that like? Um, well, the car, it's like, it's like no big deal, especially for them. Like, as soon as they get in the car, they're out for <laughs> as long as possible. Like, I took, I took Laurel to the beach and it's a two hour ride there and, uh, she just slept the whole time. And, like, it doesn't phase her at all. Like, my, I have two pets and they get so nervous in the car, but, Aww. you know, these dogs are so used to it. Like, they're trained, like, they have to be good in the car, you know? Right. So I just, I, uh, I put her in the back seat and we're good. We get out. Um, so that's really, I don't even like think about that, you know, as much, but, um, yeah, we go to the restaurants. Um, we like to go outside now because of COVID and, um, oh, yeah. Laurel absolutely loves when we're outside because, um, in our little like borough, she loves to people watch. <laughs> <laughs> she loves to just, watch everyone and go by it's so cute um but she'll just literally just lay under my feet and just either sleep or like i said people watch <laughs> if we're outside but um yeah that's not an issue at all um the only only issues is like like worrying about other people like like access issues yeah. or something um if people don't really understand service dogs or like service dog laws you know service dogs can pretty much go in any public space that you can um but not a lot of not a lot of businesses aren't as educated as um um they should be <laughs> <laughs> i understand <laughs> so uh, on that note we have a few questions from people that are listening so first question is have you ever had an issue with like you just kind of talked about this a little bit have you ever had an issue with a place not accepting a service dog yes unfortunately i have um like um i had surgery like i had mentioned uh last month yeah and um i had let them i didn't even have to but i did let them know that i was bringing my service dog she was to come with me um you know just in pre-op and post-op right and they absolutely denied her they claimed it was a sterile environment which if it actually is a sterile environment that is that is allowed to be uh, a dog is allowed to be denied right but we but most almost always pre-op and post-op are not sterile they're not sterile just because and, yes. you, and you know that because you can have people there. Yes, as long as someone um, can walk in with street clothes, that does not mean, that means it's not a sterile environment. So she is allowed in there, but they fought me. They fought me <laughs> so hard on it. So, so I was, mean, and that's a hospital. Like, that's that's yes. somewhere like a, a healthcare organization. And I feel like that's something that people should be aware of. Like, like an organization, like a hospital, like a healthcare organization doesn't know the rules (laughs) so so you know that there are a lot of people that like other businesses that don't even think about service dogs or don't even serve like healthcare related things like restaurants and and hotels and stuff that um like they won't even think about that Mm -hmm. so i feel like that's something that that businesses should should be aware of some of the rules and i feel like people should know too what their rights are if they if they have a service dog and i also yeah, feel oh, like go ahead i was just gonna say like i always um make sure i like like i look up even though i already know them i look up like the ada law, the american disability um laws right before i go somewhere just so like it's like fresh in my head right. i now have it uh saved on my phone like frequently asked questions so you can show people like this right. is the rule yeah yeah, yeah show them the actual like if they see the like a physical copy like they're like oh like oh okay maybe yeah. i am wrong <laughs> right and usually like in public places they are allowed to ask you they are they're allowed to ask you two questions one is this a service dog and then yes um and then the second question is what task is this service dog performing for your um for your needs they can ask you what your disability your medical condition is oh just what they yeah they cannot ask yeah. that um but they can ask what what tasks that they perform the dog performs yeah i mean that's sort uh-huh. of like on um like if you get 
or if you request a wheelchair or like accommodations on a flight, I mean, without mm-hmm. a service dog, they're mm-hmm. they're allowed to ask you like, what do you need the do you need the accommodation? Yes, mm-hmm. and like, what type of accommodations do you need? They're not allowed to ask you what your disability is. So that's also mm-hmm. important to note for people that are traveling on airplanes. Mm-hmm. Um. So another question that we got was how do you feel about like service dogs or versus emotional support dogs or like people passing off their emotional support dogs as as service dogs um well first off i think both are very important i think yeah they 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 they're i love i love emotional support dogs i see what they can do for my friends and other people yeah um but I do not like when people try to pass them off as service dogs. There's definitely a difference, and people don't understand that as well. A service dog is for one person that is uh, to do to perform tasks for your to mitigate your disability. Yeah. And an emotional support dog does not need it. Does not is not trained for tasks. It's just there for comfort and support for you. Yeah. So in that those terms, they do not have public access. Right, and, that and that's gets, important. That's important yeah. to note, and I feel like the lines get blurred a lot when it comes to that. Yes, and even and people even get um, therapy dogs mixed up as well, and that that's a totally different thing as well. A therapy dog is to comfort multiple people. Right. So it's not it's not for an individual. They're not task trained. I mean, they go through very extensive training as well. But they also do not have all public access. They have um, specific access to certain hospitals or facilities. Yeah, you know, their organization it allows them to be it. But right, that, that's it. You know, right. So like the dogs yeah. that you see like volunteering in the hospitals, or like the dogs right. that are in um, like some courthouses to to comfort mm-hmm. some of the survivors or victims yes. in the courthouses. Yeah. Do you remember, I won't name the place, but do you remember when we were at this place and the person was passing off their emotional support dog for a service dog and that dog started like attacking (laughs) other dogs and people and yes, and it was bad. I I, I totally understand that. You know, people love their dogs. Right, and, and they, they want to bring their dogs they, places. And I and I totally understand that, but it just makes it ten times harder for the people who actually have... Right, who have legitimate... Service dogs. Service I mean, dogs. People go through so much extensive training to get these dogs to where they need to be right. at. To be Costly able, training. Yes. <laughs> be able, whether an organization or owner training, to be at the level that they should be out yeah. in public. And it's it's really not fair because that sets the bar that that just makes it ten times harder the next time we go out if someone else sees especially like a business sees that kind of dog there right you know they won't be as um, receptive to an actual service dog right right yeah that bad behavior just one episode of some dog's bad behavior can really affect <laughs> the how receptive people are in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're done with the questions for now. (laughs) And we're going to play a lightning round travel game. (laughs) So you're going to answer these questions. There's only, I don't know, seven, eight questions with the first thing that comes to your mind. So quick, rapid questions. Okay. 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 What's your favorite place that you've been? Longwood Gardens. (laughs) That's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty lot. there. <laughs> I love it. What city do you want to go to? In the... <laughs> Speaking of dogs. <laughs> Sorry, those are my pet dogs, not my service dog. <laughs> it's okay. My pet dog is over here, like, whining and scratching and trying to get attention in the background, too. Oh, my goodness. I'll shut my door. I'm sorry. They were doing so good. <laughs> Oh, the life of having dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is, so what okay, city, so what, and so what if you could question? go into, if you go to any city in the entire world, what city would you want to go to? Ooh, with my dog, probably, 
Well, I want to go to Disney World. Okay. That's my biggest goal. Okay. That was going to be the next well. question. So oh, crap, what sorry. attraction okay. did you want to go to? But you could still do, you could still say that. You could still say like Orlando. Yeah. Okay. Orlando. Or, But I really want to go to like, I love Arizona. So probably that would be like the state or like Sedona. Sedona, where I yeah. Where I to bring uh, Laurel with It's me. so yeah. pretty there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. The Red Rocks. Oh, so cool. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, see, look, we're both talking. This is not like a lightning round. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, my dog's, my dog's messing up. <laughs> we both like to talk a lot, so. <laughs> we, can, we can start over the lightning round. I, now I have my answers. <laughs> <laughs> no, doesn't count. Oh, okay. All right. Beach or mountains? Beach. Me too. Yeah, on an airplane, window seat or aisle seat? Oh, window. <laughs> really? Yeah. I hate the window seat. I love the window seat. <laughs> I feel like I'm always like squished in there. <laughs> Not, well, my mom always sits next to me. Okay, when I that's true. So she's <laughs> yeah, always stuck she in the middle seat. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like the aisle seat because I feel like I get up a lot, like either to stand uh, up or to go to the I bathroom. I don't get up at all. Really? I- I do not like getting up. I will hold my pee. As much as I have to go to the bathroom, I will hold it. I drink so much water that, like, I always have to pee. Even if it's, like, a two-hour flight. I'm like, oh, man, i got to pee now. Yeah, no, I will hold it. And it's the worst. The airplane yeah. bathrooms are so small. Yeah. All right. What's one thing that you always carry with you besides your dog? Um, My phone. Water and dog treats. <laughs> okay. That's I know reason. that's not one thing, but those are the most Those important. are the most, yeah. Especially the dog treats. <laughs> Especially the dog, yeah. Bribery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She'll do anything for a treat. <laughs> I mean, me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so what's something when you go on a trip that you always seem to forget to pack? Uh, it's different every time, I feel like. Pretty, probably sunglasses. Yeah. They're always in my car. Oh yeah, um, but if I if I go on like the plane or something, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. So, what's your best piece of travel advice with a service dog? Ooh, hmm. well, I always say, um, always pack more food than you need. Oh yeah, like I um I know people like I haven't tri- uh, flown on a plane yet with Laurel, but I know people pack in their carry on a couple meals worth of food right and then they just pack the rest in their bag or ship if they're going longer you know ship more but like if your luggage gets lost like so you can have it in your carry-on to always have you know extra food with you to last a couple days while you are waiting yeah in case your bag gets lost yeah because those dogs will let you know (laughs) i feel like that's with anything that like you need right away people forget that like medicines or like i always pack an extra pair of clothes just in case i've had had my feeding tube explode on an airplane before (laughs) as soon as the pressure changes my Mm -hmm. feeding tube explodes and it smells so bad i know i know i know that smell yeah yeah (laughs) Um, oh, I was going to say something else, too. Oh, also, I would always, like, speaking of service, traveling with a service dog, I would always look to see, like, where you're going. Like, if you're flying on a plane, see what um, policy they have on service dogs to see what you need of them. Sometimes that you do need to notify them, I think. Okay. Um, if you're bringing a service dog, depending on what airline and stuff. Um, but then also, like, just what city you're going to or what state like see how service dog friendly they are just so you are prepared you know i'm always you know me i always like to be prepared i know (laughs) but that's not a bad thing no it's not for that i don't think um and like depending on like the weather like what kind of equipment you'll need for the dogs like if it's really hot like if you're going in the summer like you need to bring your doggy boots with you <laughs> so her paws don't get too high or too cold if it's icy or snowy you know you just gotta you gotta think of everything i mean i pack more for laurel than i do for me when we go somewhere <laughs> i mean sometimes you have to yeah you have to th- i mean there there's more to think about yeah but definitely i definitely like prepare more for traveling with a dog than i have normally have because 
you know, usually for, like, me, like, if I forget something, oh, like, you, know, you can find it pretty much. Yeah, anywhere. you can usually find <laughs> yeah. human stuff, but, <laughs> but it's harder yeah, to find not, dog yeah, stuff. Yeah, harder for do- dogs, especially service dog equipment, you know? Right, right, because there's, there's some specialized things that you need. Yes, yes. All right, well... That's our time with Taylor. (laughs) So you can keep up with Taylor and Laurel on Instagram at, what's your Instagram handle? It is loving underscore life underscore with underscore Laurel. (laughs) So so it's loving life with Laurel, but all underscores. With underscores in between. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I didn't think about that. (laughs) (laughs) I know. The underscores make it a little confusing. Yeah. All right, so you can tune in to our next episode. You can subscribe to our podcasts on all platforms. You can follow our social media at VacayAbility. That's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for our next release date and to keep up with Taylor and Laurel. Also, don't forget to visit our website at www.vacability.com to rate and review your favorite businesses, attractions, hotels, and more, all based on different types of accessibility. We'll see you next time.